Yeah. Ray still have another one over there. You do subtract 2c. And you get 5 equals 6c plus 2. And you do subtract 2. And you get 3 equals 6c. However, what are you dividing by? 3 or 6? So if you divide by 6, you get 3 over 6. That is not 2. 3 divided by 6, you say, oh, what's 3 taken into 6 parts? That ain't 2, right? It's actually a fraction. We haven't covered that in this class. So this would be 1 half. 3 over 6 is 1 half. That's the answer. Uh, or you can do it on your calculator to get 0.5. Uh, so that's why I couldn't give you that problem. That's why I had to change it origin originally. I just messed up the one I changed it to. Okay, let's move on to this one over here. So we draw our line to signify that we do, in fact, have an equation with two sides. What variable are we getting rid of first, ladies and gentlemen? Negative 2x. Negative 2x. Good, because that's our smaller variable. So we get rid of the negative 2x by what? Good. So we'll have what on the left-hand side? Good. We have that sign still. That's important. On the right-hand side, how much do we get? As soon as we get rid of that smaller variable, then we have something we can work with. So we get rid of our constant term. What's our constant term here? 18. How are we going to get rid of that? On the right-hand side, I get 11x. On the left-hand side, I get 11 positive. And if I divide both sides, what do I divide by? 11. Well, on the right-hand side, we get x. Sure, because the 11s are gone. But wait a second. What's 11 divided by 11? 1. We get 1. Say x equals 1, because that's an equation. So we do have to have the equal sign. Can you write x? Well, we did write x. No, because you have an equation, right? X has to be equal to something. So we got x equals to 1. We believe that x equals 1, and we're, we're done with that. How many people feel okay with at least this example? Good. All right. <laughs> Let's move on. start building these up little by little, making them a little bit more complicated for us. Are we going to be able to do them? Sure. You don't have to do all the stuff. You don't have to do everything. I'm really not teaching anything new except get rid of the smaller variable. That's it. But you need to tell me what I need to do first on this problem. What should I do? Combine 6a and negative 1a. Perfect. So when I combine those, I have some like terms as a matter of fact. So before we start doing all this, this stuff that we've been practicing now. You have to make sure it looks like that. You've got to make sure you combine your like terms first. In our case up here, yeah, we do have some like terms. Not on the right side. We can't do anything with that. But on the left-hand side, yeah, I see the 6a. And I see the minus 9a, or the negative 9a, which is what we're going to consider it as. How much is that going to make when I combine those like terms? The negative 3a. Notice how we're combining like terms just like we did like several weeks ago. We're just using that stuff. I'm getting 3 equals 6a plus 7, and then you have to subtract 7. That's fine. We'll talk about that. I planned on doing that on that example, not on that one. So we'll have 3a plus 7. What are we going to do now? Now that we've combined our like terms, what do we have? Good. What is our smaller variable in this case? Wait, 3a or negative 3a? Because I see both. How are we going to get rid of it? Uh, on the left hand side, I get 3. On the right hand side, I get 6. And then a plus 7. Okay, what now? Keep going. Sure, let's do that. If we subtract 7, which is our constant term, I'm going to get negative 4. 
And you go, wait a second, this is like the last problem. Well, I put this one up here on purpose because that, I didn't know if we were ready for it. But here we're ready for it. If we divide by 6, that is your step, right? You're trying to get rid of that 6 there. You're trying to eliminate that coefficient. If we divide by 6, watch what happens. Here the 6's are gone and I get A. True? Yes. What do we have on this side? Well, it doesn't work out to anything even. It doesn't work out to anything nice. Just leave it as a fraction. It's going to be OK to get fractions. As a matter of fact, after the next section, we jump right into fractions. So this is a good kind of preview for us to get some fractions out of this. So when we divide and it doesn't go in evenly, negative 4 divided by 6, just leave it negative 4 divided by 6. Okay, I haven't taught you how to reduce yet, so you don't have to reduce it. If you do know how to reduce it, great. Reduce that. That's negative 2 over 3. But if you don't know how to reduce it, leave it. Leave it as a fraction. Are fractions OK to get? Say yes. yes. Are fractions OK to get? Yeah. yeah. So if we get one, no problem. Our answer is negative 4 over 6. Eventually, we'll be able to reduce those. But for right now, we'll leave it negative 4 over 6. Raise your hand if you feel OK with that. Good. All right. Okay, we'll do one more together. We'll do a couple more together. I'll give you two more to, on, to do on your own, and then we'll start moving on. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. First thing we got to do, look for any like terms that we have to compare. So if there's no distribution, we're looking for like terms. Do we have any like terms on the left-hand side? Yes. What are they? 40 and 5. So if we combine 40 and 5, how much do we get? 45 and 5. And I still have a minus 5 y that's got to be there. On the right-hand side, do I have any like terms? Yes. Sure, yeah, I see them. Perfect. If I combine my negative 2y and my negative 4y, I get? 6y. Perfect. Yeah, that's right. Do I have any more like terms to combine? No. OK, now watch carefully on the board here to save us some issues. When you're looking for your smaller variable, you do consider the signs with those numbers. So I want you to notice something. Up here on the board, we have a negative 5y and we have a negative 6y. Those are my two variables. Yes? Yeah. Which one is smaller? Negative 5, negative 5. Which is smaller? Negative 5 or negative 6? Negative 6 is smaller than negative 5. Let's get rid of negative 6y. Now here's why. You're like, why, why does it matter? Well, if we get rid of negative 6y, we're going to have a positive y. We won't have to do any more work with that. You with me on that? If you got rid of your negative 5y, you'd have a negative y. At the very end, it's very hard to think about what negative y equals, if negative y equals a number, what does y equal to? And you have to divide by a negative or move the negative over. So if we eliminate the smaller variable, oftentimes we'll eliminate a step. Does that make sense? So let's stick with the smaller variable here. So our smaller variable is negative 6y. How are we going to get rid of negative 6y? Uh, We get 45. We get, oh, what's, what's this going to be? Plus y. Plus y. I'll tell you what, on the test, when I give you your second test, you're going to have lots of these problems. This is where people have an issue, right here, is doing this type of problem. This one, people get that, people get that. It's doing this sort of stuff. With You have a negative and a negative. A lot of people have issues with that. So really focus on getting this stuff right, making sure we're using the addition rule. Make sure we're getting rid of the smaller variable. Addition rule says different sign, subtract sign, the bigger number. That's positive y. On the right hand side, we get what? Negative 10. Hey, tell me something. What number do we have to get rid of now? 45. 45. How? Minus. So if we subtract 45, I know on the left I get y. Negative on the right 55. I get. Negative 55. Is that what you got? Negative 55? Yep. That is it. 
Now, I want to show you something, okay? Let's say that you don't listen to me and you just kind of, or you forgot this, and you got rid of the five, the minus five by first. Let's say you added that to both sides. You with me? Mm -hmm. What you're going to get at the end of your problem, you would get negative y equals positive 55. If you had done that, a different step here. Why is negative 6y smaller than Well, th which, which one is smaller between these numbers? Negative 10 and negative 1. Which one's smaller? Negative one. If you put them on the chart, negative two. Yeah. You gotta go back to the number line. If you put them on a number line, here's how you tell which numbers are smaller, right? The numbers to the left are smaller numbers. This would be ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, fifty, one, zero, then negative one, then negative ten. So which number is smaller according to negative one and negative ten? Negative ten is smaller. Here's here's how you figure this out. If negatives are only money. Which one do you owe? Which one do you owe more money? I owe more money with the negative ten than I would with the negative one. So at the end of the day, owing this amount of money would put me more in the hole than this one. I'd have less money here than I would there. That's therefore this one's smaller. So in our case, which is smaller between negative five and negative six? Negative six is definitely a smaller value. Is that, is that clear for you? Okay. That's why. Now, and you go back to this. Let's say that you happen to add 5y. What you get on this problem, actually be over on this side, you would get 55 equals negative y. I can't afford to have you leave that. I'm not looking for negative y. I'm looking for y. So if we're leaving this as negative y, we really don't have the concept down. If we understand that, okay, 55 equals negative y, how do I change that to a positive? Well, you've got to consider this is really like negative 1, right? Yes, no? If that's negative 1, I could divide both of these things by negative 1. I get negative 55 equals y. That's the same exact answer. So yes, you can do it. It's possible. But oftentimes, getting rid of the smaller variable will eliminate the need to do that altogether. Raise your hand if you understood what we just talked about. Good. Give me a good one. Good. Hey, could you manipulate that? Could you distribute and combine like terms on that problem? I know you can, right? Because we've been practicing that a long time. Now, all I'm going to do is say this is equal to zero. Let's go for it. Let's see if we can do this thing. What's the first thing that we're going to do on this problem, ladies and gentlemen? Parentheses. Good. Parentheses, which means how do we get rid of parentheses in this type of a problem? Multiply. Yeah, multiply means, what's that D word? Distribute. Yeah, we're going to distribute that. We always distribute the number in front of the parentheses with the sign. We're going to take it to not just the first one, not just the second one, but both of these things. Y'all tell me, what are we going to get when we multiply 3 times our 2x? 6x. And the next thing is? Minus 18. Good, I like it. Minus 18. And then this plus 6 is still hanging on, and we have the equal to 0. What's the next thing you're going to do? Good, and I have some. I've got a negative 18. I've got a positive 6. That means I'm going to get 6x minus 12. Oh, oh. But wait a second. I've got 6x minus 12 equals 0. I've already distributed. I've already combined like terms. But I don't have two variables here. So what happens if you don't have two variables? Well, then you, you skip that step. If we don't have two variables, there's no smaller one to get rid of. This is already set up for us. We just need to go down to the next step. Get that x by itself or get your variable by itself. Which number do we need to get rid of first? Negative 12. So even though there's not a number over here, that's okay. It could be zero. That's fine. That makes it even easier. We just have to get rid of these.